I'm Brandon Dutcher, Vice President at the Oklahoma Council of Public Affairs. With April 15th drawing nigh, I've recently sat down to talk taxes with OCPA Distinguished Fellow Jay Rufus Fears, the acclaimed historian of liberty who teaches at the University of Oklahoma. According to the Nonpartisan Tax Foundation, in 2010, Tax Freedom Day arrived in Oklahoma on April 6th. That is to say, the average Oklahoman had to work 96 days in order to earn enough money to pay his federal, state, and local tax obligations. That's more than 26% of earnings. In my conversation with Dr. Fears, he gave a guided tour of taxation through the ages, starting with the very birth of civilization in Egypt and Mesopotamia, then touching on ancient Israel, where a tax rate of 10% was thought tyrannical, through Greece and Rome, and up to the American colonists, some of the freest, most lightly taxed people in the world, who nonetheless took up arms in a tax revolt. You'll want to read the entire article in the May issue of Perspective, OCPA's monthly periodical. For now, here's a preview with Dr. Fears. The Romans had a typically practical attitude towards taxes. When they became the world's superpower by the year 167 BC, Roman citizens just stopped paying taxes. Boom. There was no way they were going to protect the world as we do and pay taxes. So they had no taxes well into um, the first part of the uh, time of the Caesars. Uh, and that was one of the great hallmarks of being a Roman citizen, say in the age of Paul, is you didn't have to pay taxes. Uh, 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 the majority of the inhabitants were not uh, citizens. That's why Paul was so proud of his status as a citizen. However, they uh, worked two days a year to pay their taxes. And for that, they got the most cost-efficient, best army the world had ever seen, peace and prosperity that in many parts of the Middle East has still not been equaled, a superb network of roads, a free market economy, social mobility two days a year. Now let's compare that to the 96 you told me about. Well, and uh, when I teach my classes, I, uh, they find it very hard to relate to the founders of our country, and not to men like George Washington, but also to the ordinary American who would take up a musket and go out to fight his fellow countrymen, British soldiers, over the question of taxation. But to them, the ability of a government to tax was its ability to control your property. And your property was a sacred right. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But a crucial part of that uh, happiness, as Thomas Jefferson himself said, is your right to keep and use as you wish the labor of your own self. Uh, we have lost that, that sense of property. We do not value property rights the way that the founders of our country did. We, the people of the United States, that's how our Constitution begins, and we have the power to reverse this trend in taxation. All we need to do is elect representatives, the House of Representatives and Senators, who will cut back government spending on a massive scale, and it can be done, and then accordingly reduce taxes. We have allowed our government to tax us so heavily. So that's the difference. We are still free individuals. We don't want to exercise that responsibility uh, because everyone has a worry that yes, but this entitlement I'm getting might be cut back or that entitlement might be cut back. And so, we the people tax ourselves. All through history, again and again, people have chosen the perceived security of a despot, our strong government, over the awesome responsibility of self-government. You see, the, the men and women who would not pay these taxes to the King of England did not expect the King of England to give them free medical care. They did not expect the King of England to give them free schools. They did not expect the King of England even to give them decent roads. If they got a decent road, a contractor would go out and build it, put a pike all up in front of it, and they would have a turnpike where they paid a toll. They did not expect the King of England to give them retirement benefits. 
or if they were unable to find a job or lost their farm, to step in and pay for it. So they had the self-responsibility, which we do not want. 